Good afternoon. I'd like to this afternoon read from the good book, which is the book that I used some weeks ago, and in particular I want to talk a little bit today about liberty. Lean liberty is better than fat slavery. Liberty is not license. The price of liberty is unsleeping vigilance. Better a crust in liberty than sweetmeats in prison. Liberty is a breath of progress. Liberty is a free man's country. We have a very great deal of liberty in this nation of ours, which was brought by war and blood of people who spent and sacrificed their lives so that we could live in freedom. Unfortunately today we are living in an age when there seems to be dominant factors in society who want to change the way we live, the way we worship, the way we live our lives. Now some of you listening to this would not, will probably not be of any particular religious persuasion but I want you to bear this in mind that whatever your religious views are you cannot deny the fact that we have fought two world wars to restore liberty to Europe and to this nation which was under a threat twice in the 20th century. We are under threat now but in a different way. The invasion and our enemies are sometimes, and I say this very guardedly, within our own nation. And we have to protect our children and our future from this incursion into our lives and into this nation. How we do this is entirely up to how we think and feel about those who will come into this nation and bringing with it a faith that goes against everything we believe in. Fairness, liberty of conscience, liberty of religion, liberty of belief. And therefore we have to be very careful in our own nation that we protect our children both our children, our young children, and also our teenagers from any harm that may befall them. Protection is not necessarily being over-emphasized in the way we protect our young ones. But in some ways we need to be a little bit more aware of those around us who would harm our children and our civil liberties. This doesn't just to apply to um, people coming from abroad, those who come here and share their religion and their views here, but it can also apply to those within our nation who are lazy people who do very little to contribute to our nation's welfare and our nation's greatness. I have a great belief in Britain, you know, I believe that this country is great. I believe that we are a nation who have given great things to the world. And although people try and down cry what we've done in other parts of the world, it comes to something when we are told in our own nation that we are ought to be ashamed of ourselves and what we have achieved in the world. But I want you to bear this in mind that we have achieved great things throughout the world and in some ways perhaps we don't respect that. In some cities in our nation you're not allowed to fly the Union flag, better known in some quarters as the Union Jack, but in the forces we call it, or we did call it, the Union flag. And therefore some places you're not allowed to fly it. Some places you're not allowed to fly outside your own home because it may bring trouble to your neighbourhood or to yourselves. The sad part of it is that liberty and that flag have flown throughout the world 
and under its shade of its protection has come many forms of liberty. And as I looked back over the centuries and as I've looked back over the time period and time frame going back to the 17th century, I have been aware of the way we view our ancestors. In the 17th century there was the civil war in this country when the king tried to rule without parliament and tried to rule by divine rights which seems these days to be a bit of a misnomer and an historical uh, inaccuracy. No monarch has the right to rule by divine rights. They are there by the grace of spirit, as we believe in spiritualism, but also by the grace of the nation and the people that they serve. To some people, the monarchy looks like a bit of a cushy job. It's a cushy number. And yes, they do have privileges that we mere mortals don't possess. But the fact is that without them, we would have a, a presidency. And that would be greatly disturbing my thoughts. And in particular, when I think back some years to when over a thousand and more, probably a million people, I believe, I've got the figure wrong there, marched through the streets of London protesting about a war in Iraq. They were ignored by the then Prime Minister, Mr Tony Blair, and our nation went to war. Now, whatever your views are, whatever you feel about it, the fact is we were in a war situation and we went to war. And people, young people, people who were in their 20s, some were maimed, some were even made the uh, supreme sacrifice. But at the end of it, look what has happened. The war was unnecessary. The loss of life was incalculable. And yet, he believed that he was right. He went against our liberties. He went against our liberty of conscience. And he went against the people of this nation in declaring war. He didn't actually declare war. He invaded Iraq without consulting Parliament or asking the nation what the nation thought. That isn't liberty. That is dictatorship. So we have to we are walking a very fine line between what is liberty and what is a dictatorship. Remember this liberty was not bought cheaply. Many died for the sake of liberty and many who followed the Christian Gospels, the Bible, were burnt at the stake for having a Bible in English. Remember also that when it came to persecution of liberty, of English liberty, the colonists in North America were faced with the this despotic way of our then sovereign King George III in his effort to make Americans or English colonists pay for a war that they had no part in apart from supplying some militia to fight the French. And at the end of the day we lost out because our king decided he wanted them to pay pay a tea tax and other taxes too, a stamp tax, so that they would repay the debt that we had insured in this nation. So it's important for us to realise that liberty isn't just for this nation, but it's for the English-speaking peoples who look to this nation to lead still and in some ways perhaps our spirituality as spiritualists comes into play because I've read in the in the Lyceum manual the three words liberty equality and fraternity it's almost like the banner of a trade union but the liberty 
equality and fraternity are at the bedrock of spiritualism and the bedrock of spiritualist belief. Eternal progress is open to every human soul. Personal responsibility. There are two tenets of the seven principles. They are the foundations, if you like, on which our faith stands. We must recognise that there are others too who do not follow spiritualism. Maybe they aren't. They are what I call secular people, people who do not believe one way or the other. There are those who follow the wicker paths, those who follow Buddhism, those who follow different religions and different disciplines of faith. But at the end of the day, whether you have a faith or not, the three words, as liberty, equality and fraternity, mean what they say. We must have equality before the law. We must have our liberty to be able to speak our minds. We must have liberty of conscience and freedom of action. And it's necessary for us to recognise in this day and age that we are going very close to losing those precious gifts if we do not stand up for what we believe in. There's little point in us having a nation that is terrified of saying what it thinks and saying what it believes because there will come a time when we will need to speak out there will be a time when we will not be able to remain silent in 1937 Winston Churchill told the Houses of Parliament told Parliament in the House, in the house that we were in danger of being at war with Germany he warned against Hitler's rise to power. He warned against the increasing size of the Luftwaffe and the Wehrmacht, the German army. He warned against Hitler's expansionist ideas in Mein Kampf in spreading towards Russia. He warned and warned and warned, and yet he was ignored, he was laughed at, and he was maligned in the press and by the pacifist dream that Neville Chamberlain wanted to and sure would would be used in this nation to make us weak when we should have been strong and these things went on and on and on no one listened to Churchill no one apart from a few people who could see the danger and today that danger is here again we are in danger as a nation of losing our liberties we are in danger of losing the principles of this nation's constitution we are in danger of losing the very thing that we want we went to war for twice in the 20th century we're in danger of losing it all and we need to stand up for our liberties of conscience but also liberty and freedom to express our views and our wishes. As I said earlier, spiritualism teaches us many things. Yes, it teaches us tolerance towards others, but it also teaches us that, that we must stand up for the liberty of other people. That we must stand in equality. Equality of what we believe are the freedoms of this nation. But above all, we must believe that we have the right to stand up and speak when we are faced with a multiple invasion of our nation and our nation's heart and beliefs and our principles. These words are there for us to recognise in how we are and what we believe. I want to leave you with these thoughts because it's important that we as spiritualists recognise liberty of conscience. There are many who are spiritualists who will disagree with the statements that I've made or this broadcast today. But I would remind them that without our strength and our purpose there would have been no development of spiritualism or any other free religion in this nation whether it be Christianity or whatever it be there will be no liberty because we will be subject to blackness we will be subject to being inv invaded in our beliefs by an alien religion 
which is totally and utterly un-British. 